Mama Coco here. Let's talk some real talk. watching the video where I sit down at Wendy's with my family and they eat but I'm drinking the green smoothie. She said to me, I just don't understand how you can sit there and not be tempted by that food. It smells delicious, you know it tastes good, why not go for it? There's a couple things that I do to combat my cravings, but before we start talking about combating the cravings or the temptations, uh, let's talk about how each of us have our own thing with food. So for me, my thing with food isn't peer pressure or feeling the need to be socially inclusive. Um, for me, my thing is emotional eating, so I can battle off all the popcorn in the world at the movie theater, even though I love popcorn. Or I can go to Wendy's with my green smoothie and say no thank you, but that's just my personality, that's who I am. Those challenges, like she said to me, how, how is that not a challenge to you? It's just, it's not. I always make sure for those occasions to bring with me something for me to eat, right? So if I'm going to the movie, <clears throat> woo, sorry, I'm still getting over a cold. If I'm going to the movie theater, I bring with me some uh, smart sweets and some Lily's chocolate and I will make myself some kale chips or I will, um, have a, a protein bar with me. I will always bring something with me because force of habit, you're watching a movie, you eat, you know. Um, so, so I always make sure to bring something with me that I can enjoy, uh, including when I know that we're going out to a fast food restaurant. And remember, when you're at a fast food restaurant on keto, you can still order food, right? Um, <clears throat> I just preferred because I was counting my macros for the day to, to have my green smoothie. My thing though, that I honestly struggle with and I've even had setbacks this week, is um, emotional eating. So some of us have more than one thing, uh, some of us only have one thing. And for me, the one major thing for me is emotional eating. And it can be harder when it's a negative emotion. So when it's a super fun, happy emotion, I'm at a family dinner with my extended family, it's Christmas, something like that. Um, I find that really challenging to say no because we're all celebrating. However, um, I find that if I'm prepared and I know what I'm, like we serve the same thing every time. So I know what's there for me to eat. I know if I wanna bring something for myself. I know that I can make um, some peanut butter fudge, uh, keto peanut butter fudge. Uh, I can bring those for a little snack while everybody's else, everybody else is eating real fudge. Um, but it's still a huge challenge for me. And yeah, I give in. And the worst part for me, the one that I really struggle at all times not to give into, would be um, negative emotions. So um, if my husband and I get in an argument, if um, you know a, a friend decides that uh, they're angry at me for something, or I'm angry at them, if the kids are you know, just pushing every button and I feel exhausted and drained and stressed out. Um, when your little girl says to you for the first time, I hate you, or you're a bad mommy, you know, um, those are really negative emotions. And growing up, I never learned how to deal with those appropriately. 
So for a few years of my life, I tried to work out whenever I had negative emotions. And yeah, it worked fabulously. My body was in good shape. When you introduce children into that mix, sometimes that solution just isn't a solution anymore. You can't just ditch your kids. You can't just walk away. Um, so in that situation, what do you do? You know, uh, it frustrates me when I see these fitness gurus, you know, oh, you can do it. Just work out at home. Uh, pick your kid up and, and do, you know, I don't know, throw them in the air. Sure. But that's not always feasible. Sometimes your kid's screaming. Sometimes your kid says, no, I don't want that. Sometimes your kid says, leave me alone. You know, other times you're working out and they're just in your face and in your face and in your face. I'm not saying you shouldn't work out. I'm saying that you need to remember that your, your wellness is 80% food, 80% and only 20% exercise. You need to exercise to have a good heart, to have good lungs, to live longer. But don't put yourself down just because you can't do what all these fitness gurus are saying you should be able to do. All these fitness gurus who don't have children and the fitness gurus who do have children buy money for somebody to watch them or a spouse to watch them or a partner or a parent who lives next door or, you know, their life is working from home so the kids go to daycare and they have time don't don't put yourself down because the reality and mama coco's here to tell you it's a reality it doesn't always work so you gotta do whatever diet works for you you gotta do whatever workout plan works for you. You got to do what works for you. You know, um, there's no cookie cutter for every individual. We all have our challenges and our temptations, you know, and you've got to figure out what is the appropriate course of action to help you with that temptation, to help you with those challenges. Um, one thing that's big for me is I really try and talk and write about my emotions to try and not um, use sugar like a drug. So overall, um, I think I'm ranting. I just think that you need to do what's best for you. The key here is to be prepared for temptations, to know what your big temptation is, and then to figure out the best ways possible to combat your temptation and comment below if you like this content these types of videos where i talk about the real struggle um tell me about your real struggle i love to hear about other people's journey and what they're doing and even if you're at the beginning of your journey or the end of your journey it still counts thanks so much and remember to click the subscribe button i'll see you later